Hey there, everybody. So uh, we're going to go ahead and work through chapter four today, uh, doing only the exercises that I actually assign. There's only, it appears to be about seven or so, so this shouldn't be too long. Uh, we've touched base previously that we're going to start using templates in this exercise. So I'm going to go ahead and draw exercise one, but instead of using the colors that it's given for line types and, and color, I'm going to go ahead and choose the layers. If you want, you can set those up that way, but going forward, we'll be using these templates. So it's not necessarily uh, pertinent that you set it up the way it says in the book for this one. So anyways, uh, exercise one, it's actually going to use the grid snap still. And, uh, you know, technically it would be at two, one starting out, but that would be, well, you know, we'll go ahead and draw it there. It's really close to the edge of the paper, but that's fine. I try to keep in sync with what actually is laid in the book, so let's do the same here. And I'm going to have to count the grids, but it's four by five, it appears. <coughs> so I'm just going to draw that. And then we've got some lines here. And, you know, it's up to you whenever you draw. I'll turn off the snap for a minute. It's up to you if you draw... Your lines is hidden to begin with or you change them later uh my preference is usually to change it after but you know in a complicated drawing you're kind of going to have to change it on the fly so uh i'll let you decide when and where to do something and since we're drawing snap i'm going to change this to be half inch increments so i can snap to this midpoint here and then i'm going to do the same little shape on the other side and I kind of goofed. This actually should be one line, so I'm going to extend it. I'm going to draw this line here. And then I'm going to connect up here. And we have a circle that is going to be one unit wide. That's pretty much it for that one. All of this is hidden lines. And we'll need our center mark. And I do emphasize, make sure that you're using the center mark instead of uh, manually drawing it. Now, if you notice, it does extend uh, to the end of the object. Make sure you're grabbing the square grip, not the uh, triangle grip drag that square to the end of the part and do the same on the other side and even though I know, I know it's not required yet we're going to go ahead and and dimension this we're going to dimension every exercise going forward technically it's actually a bad practice to dimension between hidden lines but that's okay. You know, for the sake of staying on part of how the book's doing this, we'll, we'll let it fly this time. Not a big fan of how that's placed. Let's do that. All right, well, there's that one. So that's exercise one. All right, up next is exercise three. Uh, and it says... You know, the, it's basically giving some verbal information about the locations of these circles. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up a B template again, since this one is also in inches. And we will start with drawing that left circle. It gives us a diameter value. And I'm going to draw it again in relation to where the grid is in the book. And that's okay if it overlaps the uh, the template. It may on this one. So it's three up. <clears throat> and three to the right. So yeah, right there. Okay. And then it's going to be 1.25 diameter. Hmm. So small. <laughs> I was expecting it to be a little bigger, but that's okay. All right. So... One, two, three, four units over, we're going to have a copy of it.
All right, so one, two, three, four. Seems awfully far. That's okay. We'll roll with it for now. So, P1 is the center for the bottom arc. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that. So I'm going to check in my grid snap. Something's wrong. This doesn't seem quite right. Ah, major line every. That'll get you every time. Okay, so... I feel like this is supposed to be a radius 1.25. It is. Interesting. Okay. Wouldn't you know, this book often has errors. That's fine. Okay, so note that it's a radius of 1.25. And then from P1, it doesn't give us a size. We're going to actually snap to this quadrant. So I'm going to turn off grid snap for now. And draw to the quadrant and then I'll turn the grid snap back on and do the same thing here drawing from P2 to the quadrant and we're just going to trim away the excess now <clears throat> okay so the only thing left to do is to draw the two lines, and in order to make it perfectly tangent on both sides, we have to deselect everything but tangent. It's the only way it'll give us this prompt where when we try to draw a line, it's giving a inferred or deferred, some kind of tangent. Yeah, deferred tangent. Okay. So, I will click on this deferred tangent and this deferred, <clears throat> and it'll line it up for me. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. It does have one dimension, uh, so I'll go ahead and put it in. You know, and apparently the book was wrong, so we're going to say, uh, well, you know what, let's try to help them and how they should have labeled that, shall we? Let's put a radius dimension on it, since, you know, it was trying to use that 1.25. And then let's put two times in front of it. And make sure you're filling out your title block every time. Uh... But, you know, I'm not going to bother wasting your time making you watch that with me. All right, so now we're going to do exercise five. And uh, in the same vein, you don't have to do all these custom layer changes if you want, but I probably will this time just to uh, kind of hunker down on the concepts there. All right, so it's one unit wide again for the grid. So that makes our bottom seven wide. And then we're going to go up three, over one, and go ahead and close it out. All right, so then the top portion is three wide and two tall. And then we're going to be on the halfway part of the grid, so a half unit over from the last line. <clears throat> and we'll draw all the way down until one unit from the edge. And then I'm just going to go ahead and extend this line. We don't want to have uh, multiple lines on the same segment, I guess you would say. And then we'll change all of this to be hidden. And then we need a circle. And that's going to be one unit wide, so we'll use a radius. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to center. Use the center mark command. And turn off my grid snap so we can get a little easy editing here. We're just going to grab this square grip, move it up to the end of the part. Got to turn my snaps back on. That's fine for now. <clears throat> there we go for that one. Uh, so let's go ahead and 
play with the layer stuff just so we know that you're getting a, a decent understanding of it. So I can click layer properties. And if I need to, I can make this a little bit bigger. So in this one, it said object red. So I can go in here and choose for the color. I can choose red instead. It's a pre-made color down here. I can choose one of these, but to have an exact red, I would go there. <clears throat> Uh, if I need to change the line top, I could choose continuous. And if I didn't see it in the list, I could hit load, select it, hit OK, and then it would load it in, and I could choose it and hit OK. Uh, and then, you know, if you needed to rename your layer itself, you could change it there. And in order to make layers, you can hit this button right here, new layer. Uh, you've got a few options, but you're really not going to need to play with any of these. Uh, so we won't really talk too much about that. All right, so that's that for exercise five. All right, so next is exercise six. And again, we're drawing with the grid. <laughs> you know, the book really does like that part for a bit. Once you get past the uh, beginner's phase, though, you probably won't even use the grid very much. So even though this is overlapping the title block, I'm going to go ahead and draw this right here where the grid does show it. So it shows it as 3.5, and that's okay that it overlaps. Uh, you know, when I, I made these grading keys, I made them so that, you know, they were based off the true grid. So it is perfectly fine. And if you want to draw it somewhere else, that's okay, too. I'm just going to start by drawing the basic stuff. I'm going to go ahead and do this big old circle. And it appears that we're only given the center location. We know it's three units up. Oh. And then the radius is actually just going to snap. Not to the grid. Well, I guess it could be the grid because they're in the same place. But it's going to be that end point. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw. Three units up from the center. The same position. Now, you'll probably have to turn your snaps off or it'll jump. But it's going to be another half unit. And then it's going to be four wide. All right, so to get rid of a little bit of this extra stuff, I'm going to go ahead and trim using TR, Enter, Enter. Okay. And we'll go ahead and draw these lines. We've got hidden lines that are a half unit from the edge and they extend to this portion. And those are going to be hidden. And then it appears we have another set of hidden lines that are, we'll wait and do that part. Let's go ahead and draw the circle. All right, so these extend to one unit down from this edge. And then there's going to be a straight line that cuts off the excess of the circle. So I'm just going to draw like a, a little bit past so I can trim away. I'm a big fan of easy trimming. Trim. Trim. Well, that was a bad one there. That's okay. It's always easy to control Z to undo. Alright, so then we've got to draw a hidden line here. And here. Set those to hidden. And we also need the hidden lines down here. I almost missed these. And 
And the only thing left to do is to uh, put a big center mark. Always use the largest circle when you're making a center mark. That way uh, it'll always protrude with the squares at the end of the furthest extent. You don't want the center mark to not go past the object. And that's it for this one. All right, so next we have exercise seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a B template as always. And this time we're not using the grid. So I'm just gonna turn that sucker off and uh, we'll start at one one. That's usually my go-to. Well, you know what, I say that, but this is kind of a, a bigger draw. Let's do two, two. Okay. Uh, there's different ways to go about this. I would have probably drawn a circle in hindsight, but that's okay. So I'm going to do 1.99 up and 2.62 over so I can draw my first circle set here and my second one there. Uh, and we're given a three times your value for these circles, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn my snap back on for one. But I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle, 1.5. I'm going to draw another one that is 0 0.8. And then let's do the big circle. It's going to be 2.5 and 3.5, respectively. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to delete this little projection geometry. And then we know from the center of the circle, you may not have the center snap on as I don't. So keep an eye out if you're not seeing that snap. Uh, we're going to draw 3.75 over. And then I'm going to draw, well, you know what? We'll just copy these. I'll copy from the center point. And there's that set. And then again, I'm going to draw from this center. I'm at 2.76. I'll select it, choose copy, choose the center, and snap to the endpoint. All right, so next we've got a uh, couple of snaps here. Let's start with the bottom one. And in order to do. Uh, this line properly, you need to deselect everything but tangent. So that way we get deferred tangent on both side, sides. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that one. And we'll do the same over here. And over here as well. And then we're going to turn our snaps back on. And from the quadrant, we'll do the midpoint. And from the quadrant, we will do the intersection mark for these. Oh. All right, so next thing, we'll go ahead and put in all of our center marks. And then in a case like this, you may notice there is no gap between these two dimensions. So we're just going to grab this little square grip and bring it to the end point of this center mark. That way there, there may be like a, if you can tell, there's a slight overlap in colors, but that way it seems seamless when you're not looking at it too close. Okay, so let's go ahead and dimension it. So first I'm just going to Go ahead and, and do the outside ones that are pretty easy to catch. 3.75, 2.62, 1.99. And notice I'm using the endpoints of the other one to keep them in line. Ideally, you want everything to be nice and tidy when you're detailing. All right, so we're going to make sure to keep true to the information and put quantities before the numbers. Uh, you always want to do this anyways. 
you don't have to dimension it every time when you do that. So it's uh, it's a little more tidy, and uh, frankly, I find more helpful. So, and I always keep this format just like the book shows three times and then size. And I'm not going to worry about putting all the text on there, but uh, that's going to be it for exercise seven. All right, so next we have problem solving exercise two. I'm going to open up a B template. And we're not using a grid, so I'm just going to turn off the visibility of that. I'm going to start at, let's do two, two. And we're going to be doing some projection with this one. This is kind of like the first real taste into uh, orthographic projection. So if you can't tell, uh, these three views are all based on the same shape. So the intention is that you're going to draw these views using the same math transfer between views. And you're also going to literally project some of that size. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm drawing the box shape based off the right side views giving me that one height and then I'm going to go ahead and extend this line 0.75 for that back edge that we see since it shows the overall height is in fact 1.75 and I'm going to do the same over here uh, so for now I'm going to actually quit and move over to this other view and we will get the holes from our top view inevitably so uh, as far as where you place this, it's up to you, but I'm going to do an offset from this edge of one. And that might be a little close, but we'll see. I'm trying to avoid this title block over here. Okay, so it's three wide. 1.75 wide, or tall. And then one. And I'm just going to draw a line randomly down here. And then what I'm going to do is actually draw from this edge over here. So now what I can quickly do is trim that shape away based off of that edge. And we know that this line and this line are aligned like they should be. And in the same vein, we're going to uh, jump to the next view and we'll get the holes pattern from up here as well. And I'm going to offset one from the top. And then let's go ahead and offset three up because, you know, like down here, this is three. So that means that the height must also be three. So I'm going to close out the shape. <coughs> and then I'm going to offset this far left edge 1.25 and then 1.5 from this last line. And now we know where our circles are. Uh, and let's just take a moment and do a little projection. Let's talk about it. So if I go and draw a horizontal line, let's use a different color actually. Uh, that's a little better. Okay. So if I go and I draw a horizontal line from the end of the object, the furthest extent here and here, and I do the same from this furthest extent to this furthest extent, this gives a perfect square. And if I go and, and draw a line, and make sure the intersection's on so that I can catch where they cross each other. If I draw a horizontal line connecting the two edges, it'll give me this perfect 45 degree angle. So what this means is this is actually a miter line. And it means that this is a point of inflection. We can transfer information from this view across here and transfer it here or vice versa. So in this case, what I'm going to do is draw a line just straight up from this edge. And then I can choose where it intersects this uh, miter line. And, you know, if you need it to be a little more apparent, you could, uh, you know, change the color, whatever. But where it intersects, I'm going to draw this line across. And I'm going to trim it. And now we know where that back edge is without having to actually do any math. Uh, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put this extra line down here. And what this tells us is where our circles are. 
And then what we'll do is once we get those, we'll transfer down and then we'll transfer across that minor line again to give them here. So what's cool about this is you're really not having to use any, you know, thinking at all in order to find out what something is. That's pretty nice, you know, like be careful when you hit space after doing a diameter, it'll always make a radius circle in case you were not aware. But you need to get in the habit early of trying to uh, do projection because, you know, it's kind of the staple of drafting. So if you're doing 2D work, you're going to be doing a lot of uh, projection. So it's good to get comfortable early. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and for me, I, I don't really like to have to change a lot. So I'm going to actually just draw an object line, some horizontal lines going across. I'm going to project them down past the object. And now we will trim away the excess. All right, so these are going to be hidden. And just like that, we've got our holes located. And then I'm going to choose center. And I'll go ahead and put my center line here. All right, so that view is done. Uh, you know, we'll put dimensions later, but I'm going to leave that since we already had it. Uh, I can delete this part back out. I can make our center marks here. And now I can go back and, and project the rest out. Okay, so straight down. And you could also use a ray command instead of a line. <clears throat> But for now, we'll just do lines because, you know, unless it's something really long, you may not necessarily feel like trimming out infinite lines like rays. All right, so this one will be a nice uh, thing worth exploring here. If you look here, when you look at the book, the hidden line only protrudes in this bottom portion. It's not up here. And this is where, you know, kind of using logic and reasoning comes in with drafting. So... It can't be up here because if you look at the side, there is no material here for that hole to come through. So that's why you're going to trim out the excess. And you could draw a line down for the center line, but you want to try to do an actual center line. And the reason being is if you notice, it acts like a uh, center mark. So it has these defined grips. If you draw a regular line, you know, there's no uh, convenience. It doesn't have the automatic extension that's controlled by a dimension style. So uh, we're going to go ahead and manually put in these center lines again. There we go. There's one, two. All right. So I'm going to delete out all this little projection stuff. It did its job, and now we no longer need it. All right. So it's time to just get these dimensions in, and we'll be done with this chapter. bad snap all right so we'll do the two times in front of the value And there we go. That's a uh, problem solving exercise too. Well, thanks for watching everybody.